Public Debt Management and Australia's Macroeconomic Priorities by William Mitchell and Warren Mosler. Section 3.4 Managing Financial Risk Treasury 2002 argues, quote, The CGS market underpins a number of important derivative markets that play a crucial role in managing financial risk. Winding down the CGS market could result in significant changes to a number of these markets. End quote. They note businesses use these markets to manage interest rate risk. Treasury 2002. What are their real interest rate risks of these businesses? What are the real economic costs of these feared changes? The direct interest rate management tools for businesses are actual term borrowings. Using bond futures is an indirect method that introduces additional risks to businesses whose funding costs often vary substantially from CGS rates, with spreads widening and narrowing constantly. While other forward and futures markets, such as Eurodollar futures and swap markets, more directly reflect high-grade corporate borrowing costs. In fact, before long-term U.S. Treasury bonds were issued, corporate bonds were the liquid benchmark securities, more accurately reflecting corporate borrowing costs. The Treasury 2002 then says, quote, Businesses use these markets as movements in CGS yields are highly correlated with yields on their securities and the liquidity of the market enables businesses to take positions without significantly affecting market yields. End quote. While this is true, no evidence is provided that it results in a sufficiently superior macroeconomic outcome to justify a government pre presence in the credit markets. Furthermore, there is no evidence presented that businesses could not function at least equally well without the issuance of CGS and instead use corporate securities and other futures and swap markets as yield benchmarks and hedging vehicles. To the contrary, the introduction of CGS at any given maturity raises relative yields at that maturity. Mitchell and Mosler, 2002. Further, we ask which businesses need to take positions in interest rate futures. Close examination will likely reveal it is the risk of speculators that may be more easily managed and the proposed public policy would support and encourage speculation rather than real investment behavior. Can the support of particular businesses in this manner be an appropriate use of public policy? By underlying the risk management claims is another argument. Treasury 2002 claims that investors who can manage interest rate risk, quote, may be prepared to accept a lower yield on a corporate bond. End quote. See also SFE 2002. The implication is that if CGS were unavailable, the cost of capital would be higher than otherwise, adversely affecting the macroeconomic goals specified above. This at least attempts a public goods argument. But even though we disagree with it operationally, given that CGS issuance serves to support the term structure of, rate, of rates, the contention fails at the macroeconomic level, since for every Australian dollar borrowed, there is an Australian dollar saved. If rates are a bit higher or lower due to CGS, one group benefits while another loses. There is no analysis presented of these distributional impacts. The assumption that marginally lower rates represent a real macroeconomic benefit is unsupported. The Treasury indicates that in the absence of outstanding CGS, businesses could use one of three possible alternatives to manage interest rate risk, Treasury 2002. First, businesses already use interest rate swaps for managing some interest rate risks. Second, the private sector could further develop interest rate swap futures markets, which already exist be both directly and in the form of three-month London Interbank Offered Rates, LIBOR, future markets in most currencies. A futures exchange is merely another counterparty that adds liquidity. 
so we agree with Treasury 2002 that, quote, an interest rate swap futures market may be a viable alternative, end quote. We further note, however, that LIBOR settings are based on the cost of funds from major banks, and that these banks are directly and indirectly supported by government through the likes of deposit insurance and membership benefits from the RBA. Therefore, the current LIBOR swap market is already the beneficiary of substantial government support. Third, continued development of the corporate bond market may lead to the growth of a corporate bond futures market as private agents can be expected to respond to profit-making opportunities. While the corporate bond market is not currently liquid enough to support a futures market, Treasury 2002, it can only be because there is currently not a need. If the CGS market was abandoned and a need arose, that need would lead to the emergence of a market. For example, before the U.S. Treasury futures market opened in 1978, the Government National Mortgage Association, GNMA, futures contract attracted all the liquidity. Liquidity soon transferred to the Treasury futures market, and the GNMA market actively and, the, and GNMA market activity rapidly declined and was subsequently discontinued.